when we talked about, remember, a function, right? We looked at functions. Now, these are all examples of functions. And the reason why, again, they're all examples of functions, if you look at any value of your input 1, each of these only have exactly one y-coordinate when x equals 1, right? So that's what we a lot, of, a lot of times we call the vertical line test. You guys could see that the graph passed the vertical line test. There's only one output for every input. That's what made these a functions. These are all examples of functions. However, when we are determining if a function has an inverse, then the graph has to be what we call one to one. And what they mean is, for, for a one to one, that means for every input, we're going to have an output. And for every output, we're going to have exactly the same input. So the best way to kind of look at that is for every output, you have exact, so basically you have every input has exactly an output. And every output has exactly one input. So it's kind of like doing the function test back over again. All right? Um, so you, I want you guys to write, I mean, to understand it. Basically, it's, you, it's uniquely going left and right. Every input has exactly one output. Every output has exactly one input. So if remember, if we're determining a function and we said every input had exactly one output, then we use the vertical line test, right? Now, if we are going to determine if every output has exactly one input, then we're going to want to use the horizontal line test. And basically, let's just use 1, 2, 3. Let's go at 3. So as you guys can see, that when you're doing the horizontal line test, if you have an output that has more than one input, right? That output has more than one input. This example is not 1 to 1. So what does that matter? Why, why would we care about if that's not going to have inverse? It's not going to have, um, if it's not 1 to 1, then there's no inverse of the function. And I'll explain that in a second. However, this is 1 to 1, right? My one output has one input. And there's no other horizontal lines that would cross the graph more than once, right? So this is what we call 1 to 1. And this is another example. This is another example of one to one. So the best way to understand one to one is basically just using the horizontal line test. All right, you guys can write down the definition, and I can give it to you. But as long as you guys understand the horizontal line test, that's the most important thing. So what exactly? Um, so now that we know that has an inverse, how can we go ahead and use that to our advantage? Well, ah. Oh, there's my blue. So what we're going to do to graph the inverse, obviously, once you guys learn how to do it algebraically, you can algebraically do it and then plug it in your graphing calculator and graph it. Or if you guys go back to your geometry days, we can get practice on graphing about the y equals x line. So when you reflect a graph about the y equals x line, you produce the inverse graph. Okay, So if you might want to write that down, I'm not going to write it down on this. But by reflecting over the y equals x line, you produce the inverse function. Now, um, the best thing I always like to do that is whenever you guys are having trouble with reflections, you know, use like a sheet of paper. So if you guys had this graph, you guys can see, oh. I know what the graph looks like over here. All I'm simply doing is reflecting it over. right? I'm taking whatever's above the line, reflecting it over. Whatever's below the line, I'm reflecting it above. And what you guys would see if you reflected this, the reflection here is not a function. right? Do you guys agree with me? That's why this doesn't have an inverse that's a function. Do you guys see how that one, the, on, the one to one property works? When it doesn't pass the horizontal test and you reflect it, it doesn't pass the vertical test. That's why we say it doesn't have an inverse. Over in this example, this graph is actually reflective about itself. So when I go ahead and reflect, 
about the y equals x, the, the, this graph and its, and its inverse is exactly the same. It's an inverse of itself, which is kind of cool. Over here, uh, the graph is going to look something like this. You're basically switching there. And it looks like this. But again, what you guys can see is that blue graph. What you guys can see, though, is the graph still passes the vertical line test. Correct? This is just a reflection point. It's not actually two points. So it passes the vertical line test. So that's the blue graphs is what's going to be your example. And again, all I did was I took whatever was below the graph, I reflected it above. Whatever was above, I reflected it below. So you guys will be asked to, one, determine if a graph is a, um, has an inverse. To do that, just apply the horizontal line test. The next thing you'll be asked to do is uh, sketch the graph of the function. And to do that, all you do is reflect about y equals x. Anybody have any questions? If I gave you a graph like that, you'd say no inverse exists, and you wouldn't have to do anything. I just showed you why it didn't exist. And the second one would just stay the same. Huh? And the second example would be Yeah, you would just, uh, I mean, it, you'd have to say it's going to be the same graph. y equals inverse of itself. Yes? Well, the last one, how does it pass the vertical line? It looks very close to being vertical, but it's not actually vertical. I didn't really graph it as well. But does that kind of make sense? That looks like that. I'll show you guys what to do to graph it so you can even look at what the graphing calculator looks like. But you'll be able to see it. It's supposed to look very, very vertical. It's kind of like this. When we, when we do like, like that graph, that's the cubic graph. That's x cubed. This is a reflection point. But it's not, there's not two of those that are for the same thing. Like, that's just a reflection point. So if I was to reflect that over, it looks very close to vertical, but it's not going to be vertical. All right. Anybody have any questions for graphically on inverses? Everybody 